Okay, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jagadish uh, Narayana Swami, Mishar Jaggi. I have with me Nitin, Krish, and I also have Anupam Barwa, who's uh, one of the product managers along with me, and our two technical marketing engineers. Uh, morning, we rushed the demo. Uh, we will go back and revisit uh, half of the demo again. Uh, apart from the, the, the differentiated policies which we showed, we will go back to the voice and video experience, show you the multicast, and then we have a flexible NetFlow demo and also a high availability demo. So you can see this live. Uh, we, we are not, no flash, everything is there at the back end. We will send one of our TMEs to go pull down the cable and you'll see how these HA fail, failover happens, all those things. That being said, uh, this is the whole topology which we are talking about. As I mentioned earlier, we have a phone. We have a, a wired corporate user, and we have also an access point. We're connected with uh, two devices. That is uh, a personal laptop, and I would say that as the, the, the uh, personal uh, iPad uh, from a partner and, and a corporate uh, iPad where it's been provisioned, onboarding is done. Then we, we'll go to the, we saw, what the, saw the differentiated policies where the personal iPad was able to access to the, uh, the, inter, inter, in, the internal website, whereas the, there was a, a denial uh, for the partner user because it was a guest uh, application again. Now let's go to the uh, voice and video experience. As I mentioned earlier, in my topology in the morning, in the older architecture, in the centralized architecture, we have everything going north-south. All the traffic hits the controller and then hairpins, bend, I mean, hairpins back to the uh, devices. Here, the same thing. As you can see here, there is one wired device that's a for IP phone connected to the same switch. And we also have a, a, a Jabba client on, a, on an iPad running on, the same access, on an access point connected to the same switch, which is the 3850. And when we initiate a call, a call from the Jabba client to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the phone, you will see that the, the call is initiated, and it terminates only on the access layer. It doesn't do any hairpin uh, from from the uh, core. Is it? Okay. So I need to. Can you turn? Yeah. Can So we have both the devices authenticated and they're working. And you'll see that the, uh, this is the, the corporate device, which is iPad, which is there. And we're in initiating a Jabba call from this device to a phone, which is here. That is the uh, wired phone connected to the switch. So, so guys, uh, as Jaggi pointed out, uh, we'll be showing that the traffic from this wireless device to the wired device on the same switch would be going east-west instead of north-south. So how I'm going to show you that is through the NetFlow. So I'm using a third party collector here, which actually shows the clear net flows through the pointers. So this is the iPad screen that I have. I'm going to initiate a Jabber call. So I've now logged in onto the call manager that I have to which the wired IP phones are connected. So I'm going to dial the extension 1008. So it's automatic, it will automatically pick up. So you guys have seen that it has already <coughs> so it will take some time to you know refresh because this is software issue. Okay, so the software on the uh, laptop is not refreshing. It's a glitch. Give me a second for that. We're trying to make it simple <laughs> to see, but it's complicated to do. I think the software is it's not responding. Give me a second. Fancy graph you got there. <laughs>
Okay, so just totally stop responding. I don't know. These are some crinkly packages, I gotta say. Let's approve of router berries. <laughs> okay, here we go. Didn't you make a roll of no chips? Yeah, no chips, no crinkly packages. <laughs> so as you guys see, uh, you can see that I'm, I'm doing a video call. So this is some software glitch that we're having here. So uh, I can see the video on the phone. Now if you want to see the flexible net flow outputs, I'm using a third party software. Now my call manager IP address is 10.1.26, which is here. You can see that it is making a call to 10.1.1.108, which is the iPad IP address. And it is also making a call. There is also another flow. Let me highlight that to you guys. The topic in short. Sorry? Hmm. Good. It's not that clear. Because I'm not sure if it's clear. Do you want to check the IP address here? Yeah. What is the IP address on there? Yeah. So let me show you something else in the meantime. So let me turn it on the 10.1.1. Just the... Let me just Can you confirm the IP address also? I can't see that. Networks that are. Ah, I'll Should be there. What is this? 104. 104. So IP address of the IP phone is 104. So let me show it to you. Where did 104 go? Let's just fake it. So out here, this is the 104. Now you can see that this particular IP phone is making a call to the iPad which is here which is 102 and it is also connected to the call manager. Now the call between the wired and the wireless device is happening within the switch. The switch is actually switching the traffic within it itself. So the call is not actually going to any WLC controller in the data center level. It is being locally switched from the wireless to the wired devices. So now the next thing which we will uh, jump into is the multicast optimization where uh, I, I believe uh, maybe some of you have already used the HREP uh, access points. In the H3, in HREP access points you know that there is no multicast support but here since we are moving the controller to the edge uh, you will have the AP in the local mode and still we can do multicast optimization here. Uh, what you can see here is basically one multicast packet uh, coming down to the switch and it's going to be replicated onto all the Ethernet ports on the switch where, the, uh, where there is an IGMP join request coming in. In case there is no IGMP join request, you will not see uh, any, packets, um, any multicast packet going out to that particular port. So what you will see now is basically a connection between two, two of the iPads. You will see that there's a video a uh, video uh, from being which is being uh, sent down from the server which is inside, which is the multicast server from the, uh, from the distribution network down to the access. Okay, it seems it's back in business. So let me open the multicast stream for you. So we're using a software named uh, Good Player here from the uh, Apple app, uh, app Store, so which can actually, you know, run a uh, multicast stream. So the first IP address that we have is the multicast IP address that we are running on. So I think because of the software sending the data back to the Apple MacBook and then showing it out there is a big problem. So can you run the multicast stream on that iPad as well? 
So this is a multicast stream that we have. A multicast streamer is actually a uh, Lenovo laptop that is lying and connected to the uh, switch. active switch that we have on the back side of the... Okay. We can just pass it on to you. Yeah. 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 Uh, Chris, we'll just pass it on to you. Just increase the volume. Same thing is going to be seen on the other laptop, other ma ma uh, the uh, other uh, iPad as well. So I can actually uh, run a multicast stream here as well. So if I say RTP multicast 225.1.1.10. So I have the same stream running on the wired client as well. Now if you, if I go back to the same thing, we did not have the flows. So that's the multicast server IP address, the stream that we are running on. If you can see, we have one client out here which is 108 and we have the other client which is 103.102 so if you see we are only getting one stream from the streamer and then it is getting replicated for both wired and wireless at the switch level so this is what we wanted to showcase out here that is replication for both wired and wireless from the streamer from the streamer you get a single stream at the switch it gets replicated for both wired and wireless Whereas before in the current scenario that we have, the replication for wireless happens at the WLAN controller and for the wired it happens at the switch. But with 3850, replication happens at the local switch itself for both the users. Okay. That's it. Now, with this, what we'll do is uh, we will switch over to the HA demo. Uh, let, I will let Nitin bring up the HA part as well so that we can follow step by step because this is pretty, you, you need to observe this pretty closely. So. Now it's playing back on the iPad. So this is the iPad screen which you're seeing. So I'll keep this video running for a couple of minutes until the time I make the second access point up and running. Okay, up and running. <laughs> Oh, you mean I have the device? Finally, I'll be able to work on the accounting application for my iPad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you want to the you want to the you want to the you want to the just like, holy oh crap, I'm screwed.
We have the second access point up on the other switch as well. So we have two switches in the back, uh, in the room behind. We have two switches. One is an active, and another is a standby. So he will show you. This is the topology what we have so behind in the room. So he will show you which switch is active, which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, standby, and then uh, Krish will go around and and pull the uh, cable on the active. You'll see that the state's uh, synchronization happens between. The, uh, which has happened between the active and the standby immediately takes over the control of the wireless controller as well as the other other uh, other transactions which are happening on the sessions on the switch and you'll see that there is seamless uh, service restored to the clients as well so uh, this is the topology that we are using as of today okay so now what happened okay now uh, we have three, uh, three IP phones in front of you. So these are the two IP phones which are connected to the standby switch that we have. And we have one IP phone hardwired to the active switch. In the same scenario, we also have one access point which is connected to the active switch and the second one to the standby switch. We have one of the, so uh, what we are going to depict here is that, so uh, one of the iPads are not mentioned here, but we are going to showcase you the same thing. So what we are going to depict you here is that, We'll be making a call from the wired IP phone or maybe from the Jabber phone to the wired IP phone through the active switch. And then we are also going to make another call from wired phone to the other wired phone which is connected to the standby switch. And that uh, everything would be a video call. And in between what we are going to do is we are going to unplug the active switch and then we are going to see what behavior do, do we see in case the active switch goes down in a stack. So uh, that is the test scenario that we have it for today. The, the top one is active, right? Yeah, yes. The top one is oh, the active. Sorry, the, the caption on the very right hand top phone says connected to standby right. switch. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, I think so I copied okay. the image. Let me just so do the cut and paste. Okay. So, so are you pulling the power on it or are you pulling the stack cable on it? We're pulling the we power out. We're pulling the power out. We're kicking the cable off. Yeah, I'm going to turn it into it. <laughs> So okay, just, just observe the, the <laughs> I would say observe the stat status on, on the active. Um, when he does the show commands, you can see the status of the active switch and the standby switch. Or, or, and at the same time, what are the AP statuses? When all the APs are connected, what are the client status? You can see all those information here. And then when the uh, uh, thing is, you need to change your points. Okay. And when we click, kick the cable off the uh, active, you will see the status changing over here as well. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually pinging the SPI, which is there in the stack. So you can see I'm getting a response from there. Second thing, uh, second thing I'm going to do is to run Putty and show you guys the configuration. Let me increase the font size for you guys. <coughs> 
So as you can see, we have three clients right now connected. And we have two access points connected to the switch. So one is to the active switch, second one is to the standby switch. Both the access points are lying there. You would be able to see it's a 3602i access points that we have. So that's it? Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, great. Show switch. You want to show yeah, switch. Yeah, so let's do show switch also. Now we have uh, one of the switch marked as active. And the second switch is the standby switch that we have. So the first one is the member. We have created a member, but we didn't plug in the switch. So the MAC address and everything remains zero. And current state is provision, wherein the active and standby are in the ready mode. So for now, <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate another Jabber call. Help you. This would be the active one. What's the extension? One zero one zero. One zero one zero. So it will automatically get it up. No, it I works. said it works. <laughs> so, so if you're sitting over in building C about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and you hear that sound from a cubicle, four cubicles over, you hear, yes! <laughs> and then followed by a guy running out of the room to go get a Coke because half of his day just got over. <laughs> I was going to say, Tom's okay. calling someone a dork is kind of hard. Oh. <laughs> you want to try to help with the big party. <laughs> we, we recognize <laughs> each other. <laughs> okay, now, now you smell okay, okay, so now we have the video call running on both the standby switch as well as the active switch. The active switch has the wireless connectivity, wherein the, from uh, this is connected to the active switch, making a call to the active IP phone, which is connected to the active switch. And then we have two standby IP phones, which are connected onto the standby switch. So now Krish is going on to the back side and he's going to plug out the cable for the active switch. So if somebody wants to join Krish, no, no, we are free to join him. Headset button on that phone. Yeah. I'm sorry? You hit the headset button, you don't get the feedback loop. Okay. Yep. So as soon as Krish plugs out the cable for the active switch, you'll also be able to see the logs and there should be a ping out so that's where Krish has pulled out the cable you can see there's only two ping out and on 3850 oops so i lost the telnet connection But as you can see here, the call is still there on the standby switch. And when we do this show AP summary, you'll see that the AP still is up there on the standby switch. Only one AP will show up now. It's taking some time to wait. Because the other AP takes some time before it drops off the CAPAP tunnel, so it, it's there. Let me open the again. Show client summary. Yeah. You see, we only have one access point as of now. Show wireless client So we have all the clients up and running. All the clients converge to the Neo access point, which came up on the second switch. And now we do a show switch. You'll see that the second switch has taken over as, a, as an active member. When you mute a 9971, it mutes the video. Yeah, but you can still see it. So, yeah, still, still the whole demo which we had planned for the 3850, <coughs> showing your, uh, showing the uh, different things like the FNF, converged access, HA. Do you have any questions? You need to see anything more? Well, I'm curious. After seeing the little demo video of it integrated with Prime, do you have a, the ability to demonstrate the integration with Prime and show all the feature set that just showed in the video? 
We, we could have done that, unfortunately, uh, when we brought the machine in, uh, the prime part, the VM part didn't come up properly. Okay. So, unfortunately, I, I, I cannot do that, but still, next time when we are, when you guys are around here, we'll surely make sure we can show it. But we have a demo set up elsewhere, which, can you log into that box? No, that, uh, Sriram. 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 Krish. Krish. So we yeah, have. It, it's fine. It's just, uh, you see the the little video, Absolutely. and I'm wondering yeah. how much that's marketing versus how no, much of no, that no. is realistic. It's real. Take my word. I've shown you so much. Not that I didn't want to show you that. I, we had that ready. Only thing is, we didn't have mm, luck. Fav didn't favor us today. So. For shops that already have a wireless LAN controller deployed, like a triple five away, mm -hmm. how does this? Does it displace that? Does it work no. in conjunction with? Okay. Uh, in, in, I'll go back to the slides. Uh, give me a, you're okay with the demo. You're done with the demo, right? So let me go back to the slides and give you, show you some, something more on the slides itself. This pairs into a question I had earlier. Um, does, the wire, does the wireless LAN control system play into these? Is this how you're wrapping all the different Wilsies together? Uh, what do you mean by? So I think it's wireless LAN control system. It was the server that managed all the, the Wilsies before. Is that how you guys are wrapping all this together? Or WCS, maybe that's it. Wireless control. WCS. Yeah, WCS. Oh, yeah, WCS. Yeah. WCS. Okay, so you're, you're, you're talking about WCS, okay? Give okay. me one minute. We also have a small uh, a website which we always share information. This is basically, uh, you can go and say, So this is the, this is the uh, website which we have. I think uh, Lauren designed this. So you can go and if you. So that's one thing. Apart from that, let me go back to the slides so here. Can you, can you explain that like, people can join the community? Yeah, you, I mean, basically in this particular. Can you click on the You can go. Private uh, community, we're doing similar to how the team does a private community. Log in to the upper right hand corner with your basically Cisco.com ID. You should go up there. I'm so okay. Your master of puppets. No, they haven't released the manifest. So once once I've logged in. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can click on the button where it says I'm already a member, then you'll see all, all the people who are there. So these are all the, uh, the, uh, the people who are on, <coughs> on the uh, site who uh, answer the questions when it comes up. We're so. off office hours like next week, so. Okay. So some, these are some of the things which we are currently working on. And there'll be slightly better graphics. <laughs> Content's what counts. Exactly. So let me go back to the presentation. Uh,
Okay. Some of the design options which we talked about. Uh, so what we see here is, uh, to come back to your question, if you have, a, I'll, I'll show you the slides again. When we have 50, when we have a, a small branch office and you need to deploy uh, up to 50 access points, you can still use only a 3850. You do not need an external controller. The 3850 can work in multiple modes, as I said, MA, which is where all the cap app termination is going to be terminated. MC is the mobility controller where it, ha where it has, where the licensing is enforced on the MC for, for access points. At the same time, any roaming decision, RRM, uh, as, um, spectrum intelligence, all that can be done at the uh, at the at the at the uh, 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 MC level. Here, you have up to 50 access points in one branch office, and uh, you want to scale up to 2,000 clients. You can use this uh, kind of a, 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 a architecture. You, you can use it at the branch office alone. But if you want to do anything more than this, uh, you want to scale between. Uh, more, if you want to scale between 51 to 250 access points, you can still go with the 35, 3850 as the, as the setup. You do not need an external controller. You can make, you can have MCs on the 3850 configured and still have up to uh, 250 access points connected here and scale up to 16,000 clients. Here comes the catch. When you scale beyond 250 access points, what you need to do is basically you need to use an external controller, uh, in that case, which is basically a, a 5508 or a 5760 or a Wizen 2. But you need to upgrade to a version 7.3 version, which has the new mobility version enabled on it. So once you have that, what happens, all your enforcement happens at the 5508, which becomes the MC. And all the 3850s here will be MAs. So that's where the 5508 comes still, there is still value for the 5508, your investment is still protected on the 5508. It becomes a hierarchical Absolutely. policy manager. Absolutely. And which code rep did you say that was? 73116.0 would be the code which you want to run on the, uh, mobili on the, on the uh, 5508 um, to get the new mobility architecture running. Okay, uh, so I might have missed something there. I understand the whole MCMA component, but so let's say the, um, the traffic clipping, so rate limiting of clients, mm -hmm. that's still happening at the 3850. All that happens still is at the 3850. The policy is just being all pushed the, from the yeah, MCs. All the policies, okay. only, only M, the, the MC role, as I said, only RRN. Okay. Um, then the, the, your, your, your uh, roaming policies, all those things are, when you roam across SPGs, then the, then the 5508 comes into, the MC comes into picture. Otherwise, it happens in the same SPG itself. So it doesn't have to go to the MC. The other thing, which uh, here again, uh, there's one optional element which we are talking about. The scaling limits on these are pretty high, as I said earlier uh, in, in the morning. Uh, you can scale up to 72,000 access points, depending upon what controller you have. Uh, if you're using a 5760, where you can have uh, 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 you can terminate 1,000 APs with the mobility domain and the mobility groups, you can scale up to like 72 controllers and it becomes 72,000 access points, and looking at the client count, it'll be something around 864,000 clients. At that point, you might want to look into a new entity, which is the Mobility Oracle, to maintain the databases, because it might be difficult. I mean, we have not scaled, I mean, we have not seen a scaling to that level yet, but we have tested it, but it looks like we need to have uh, MOs in place as and when you reach uh, <coughs> greater numbers. Any questions so far? Couple of things which I did not talk in the morning. Um, there was a question by the gentleman asked there, what's, what's the catch over here? All your access points which you're using today should be 11N access points. Um, the, the controller is currently, the 3850 uh, uh, runs with a, a, a 7.0 version again, seven, uh, to correct here, it's 7.3. 116. On, on this, on, on the, on the, on the uh, controller version which is running here is 7.0 version control, uh, controller software, but with uh, additions to the uh, second gen access point support, IPv6, 
some of those things are BYOD features are included on the, on the 3850. That is one thing. The, the other thing is you need to have the, the only 11N access points are supported. You, we do not have support for the 1130s or the non-11N access points are not supported on the, on the 3850 or the 5760. The next thing is all the access points have to be directly connected to the 3850. In case you do not want the 3850 what, no, what, the controller functionality, you can disable the wireless and still use it as a normal switch. So those are the things which I did leave out in the morning. Anything else that needs to be addressed? Any, any questions? So you can't cascade switches? No. Uh, you cannot, I cannot uh, indirectly connect to APs. We do not support that. So if you have uh, another switch downstream here connecting to a 3850, and you want to have APs, if your APs are hanging out of those switches, it can be a, any, any, any switch, a 2960, a compact switch. No, it is not supported. We do not have support for that. At the same time, if you want to connect, an, uh, if you're using it in a branch environment, and if you want to connect uh, any other control, like a 2504 onto this particular uh, switch, and try to use it as a backup, no, it will not, be, it, will not it is not supported. You need to use, use it in an in a HA mode, which we showed here. Uh, the demo uh, have multiple switches in a stack. That's when you can have uh, the standby. I mean, the resiliency built into your network. And I think the, the idea behind that is because the 3850 can run the wireless software on its own. That you're going to drop that in a wiring closet where your APs are going to terminate anyway. Well, I was thinking that you might have your cap lap going through an intermediary switch and still being terminated. The model I'm thinking of, because I've run into it with Google customers, is, gee, I've got all these 3750s in my closet. Can I stick in a central? I don't have that many APs, so can I stick in a central 3850? Right, to, to aggregate yes. 20 APs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So basically, no. using your 3850 as a wireless right. control. You, you can, not, you you can not support it. Today, we do not have support for that. And we will not have support for that. And that's right, because the, well, the pricing is the so, yeah. so what's the restriction there? Is it signaling that occurs at layer It's one? internal logic. Uh, um, I wouldn't go to that deeper into that. I would say the logic. Well, it's, it's an access layer switch. And that's where it's positioned 3850 as an access layer in the wiring closet. Um, you know, again, it's up to the customer how they use the switch. But we don't intend to use, or, or one customer can use 3850 as a so the reality is in almost any large scale environment, we're going to have a combination of controllers and 3850s. Absolutely. You're never going to get away with just having 3850s. I mean, there again, when you say large, uh, when I would be, when some people would say 250 access points would be large for them. Then you're going to have to start scaling the controllers anyways for the management. Absolutely. Of if you're anything below 250 access points, you can still go with the 3850. Live with the uh, MC, you, have, you can have multiple MCs and still I have 3850 acting as an MC without going in. Uh, so, I've, so I've got an edge question here. I know that you can't terminate, like go switch down and terminate the AP back as a controller, but if you have a tertiary controller or a secondary controller already in your environment, there's no reason you can't signal cap wrap all the way no, back to controller. No, the cap wrap directly terminates on the 3850. No, 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 I get that. But yep. I'm saying if, if for some reason you no. had. You were using the 3850 almost as a dis distribution point. Got it. And you had a 3560 below it. Mm -hmm. And then you had an AP that was talking to... The WLC external WLC. Yeah, to, uh, you can do that fine. No. Yes, you, you can do that fine. I think that not, to the 38, not to the 3850, but all the way yeah, up to like 55. The 3560 yeah. directly connected to your distribution can still connect to the, the to the uh, external WLC control. But that but that distribution could be the 3850. But yes. in, in only in a switch mode, only as a switch, yes, you yes. can do that. As soon as you turn the access stuff on it, it'll screw up Absolutely. because you won't be able to pump cap lap. No, the cap lap right. will never. Okay, that, that's good to know because I can yeah. see customers yeah. doing that as part of a transition methodology yeah. to eventually move to the 3850s. Yeah. So that, that's it's actually one single CLI command that controls it. The moment you enable the wireless piece of it, it ceases to exist as a simple access switch. It automatically enables the MA function. Okay, so that's good to know. You don't just and configure and the wireless management VLAN <coughs> command. You will be able to use it just like a person for PX click. Globally or per interface? It's a global command. Yeah, it's a global system. So all the wireless commands are global. Now that you brought up that question, I had hidden Do those slides. Let me bring up those slides. Yeah. I mean, do like a closet at the time. Yeah. 
That's a bit of a gadget, isn't it? It's not a bad model, so I guess you wrap your head around. Now that you brought up that question, what are the migration scenarios? I had hidden the slides because of the time in the morning, so now that I have a <laughs> lot, lot of time, I can talk about it. So what are the migration scenarios? So this is how today the, the architecture exists, like with the, all, all the cap app terminating at the 55 or the WISM. So there is Ethernet or IP tunnels, all those things are done. So what, how would you migrate? So here, what it did is we changed one of the, uh, one, two of the access switches to a 3850, then software upgrade on, on the, on the uh, controllers on the top. Then you see the change there. The cap app termination happens locally. At the same time, the, the cap, uh, the, the, this cap app, this became a regular tunnel to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the distribution or to the core. Now, if you want to do an upgrade, further upgrade, you could go do a controller upgrade there you know, certain things which you need to be aware, all the features which are today available on 7.3 or 7.4 may not be available or will not, are not available today on 5760 before you go swap it out to a 5760 controller. And then once you're done, you can do a gracial upgrade on your access with multiple 3850s. In this environment, as you can see here, you still have 3750 and 3850 existing. So here, this part of the network still is on a 3850, but here you have 3750 switches, which are terminating access point down here, and still the cap app termination works, so is supported at the, at, the, uh, 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 at the controller on the top. So these are some of the migration scenarios which you might be looking at uh, when people want to migrate from the older architecture to a new architecture. So other than scale, is there feature parity between 3850 and the 5K? Bonjour gateway? everything there well, I wouldn't say that we are at hundred percent compatibility there all these are we are catching up with those you will see that in the next two releases yes we will be uh, in line with the uh, centralized controller so everything yeah mm -hmm. okay. hmm. anything else Finally, this is the whole architecture which we want you to migrate to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. You mean you want us to buy new hardware? <laughs> no way. You buy new. <coughs> Did you mention anything about the pricing of 3850? Yeah, I man, I did not mention anything about the pricing. Any, any question on the pricing? The, the 3850 today is priced as the same as the 3750. There's absolutely no difference in pricing. So there is no premium for, for the 3850. getting a 3850, but you're getting all the benefits. But what's the premium for the license to turn on the wireless? $200 per AP. Per AP. Per AP. Per AP. If you buy, if you buy it separately. But we also have some bundles that you can order um, initially when you're thinking of doing uh, converge access. There, you get a $100 discount. So you can get a $100 per AP license. The other thing here is if you have a Wisem 2 controller and a 55 hour controller with X amount of licenses which you can spare, you can still use that when you upgrade the code to new mobility. If you have licenses on a 57, or on a 3850 and you then buy a 5760, you, you can, there is an option to migrate those licenses. You can interchange, but you cannot migrate licenses from <coughs> AirOS to an iOS or vice versa. So I know this is all borderless that we're talking about, which is for the most part enterprise, but I'm gonna flip the script a little bit. I've done a lot of work with WISPs in the past. Mm -hmm. Is there any model to do the 3850 as like a localized controller for a WISP? I mean, from a structure I, perspective, I, I don't see I how don't, it wouldn't I don't anyway. think we have that at this point of time. Okay. Uh, might be we can discuss and take it offline. Oh, this is this is past life. It's just a curiosity. No, I don't think I don't think so. We don't we don't have any roadmap okay. for that. In order to turn on wireless functionality you have to have either IP base or IP, IP services, services image based license. That's minimum. So there was a question what what do we charge for wireless features features it needs to at least minimum have IP based like services. And then the AP licenses are required only when you want to turn on the mobility controller. controller. 
If you want to use MA, all you will need is either IP base or IP service. I gave up ordering LAN base on these switches a long time ago. So <laughs> we, we also said that once you turn on the wireless function set, it's no longer a straight layer two switch. From the access perspective, what about for normal client perspective? Are, are there any functions that I lose? Oh, the wired, the, wired client? Yeah, if I just plug a wired client in, or does it it's, still act like a straight? It still wired. act like a layer two switch. I, I assumed it did, but the statement was made it's no, no longer no, no, a normal no. layer two access. The wired switch. functions remain the same. There's absolutely no change on the wired. It's function. just stuff that uses the cap flap tunnels can't pass yeah. through it anymore. Okay. Cool. Is there a trade-in program for all the 3750Xs I bought last year? <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> I know. Talk so, to so, your, uh, <laughs> so basically, you would only really buy 3750Xs if you were buying them because that was going into an existing install base. The other and thing is, if, if, if you need backward compatibility, yeah. then you will buy it. If you need some uh, compliance reasons, for example, it's going to take us a while to get FIPS compliance on 3850 or USCL or... Um, what the others are, GDIC, you know, there are a few federal okay. com compliance that we are going to get in 38 but it's going to take us a while. That one case, the other case would be, for example, if you need TrustSec today, if you're going to deploy TrustSec, Cisco TrustSec end to end, 38 doesn't have the code to support it right now. It's going to be available in six months. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's hardware capable. Package, the, it is hardware capable. So Only hardware thing is. capable, but software is going to be available in six, seven months time frame. So there will be, you know, there are a few, uh, four or five other reasons where uh, you should still go with 3750S. And we said we're... that, even though the pricing is the same, so the first thing that comes to the customer's mind is that we're going to end of sale 3750S, right? No. But no. there is no plan to end of sale 3750X for at least another couple of years. Why? Because they just killed the 3750Gs and Es. They got to at least have a 3750 for a little while. <laughs> 3750X is a great product. It's already, you know, leading stackable switch in the market. A lot of customers love it. And there are some customers who just continue to keep buying, keep buying. and deploy cards and Cash cow. So it's like it's <laughs> like OSX line. It's as good as it's ever gonna get. But if you want something new, you've gotta upgrade. I, the, the no, trick no, that's, that's not totally true. But as long as we can support the softwares in the existing hardware, we'll keep adding software. Now there could be some new software features that will require modifications in the hardware that we cannot make in 3750X. In can. that case, you have to get a 3850. Well, but majority of the software features for the next at least year and a half, you're going to see in both 3750X and also in 3850. But the trick's been this. When you guys have launched switches in the past, there's been a price premium too. When we've gone from one rev to another stack to stack, well switches there's been a price premium because we've gone from one gig to 10 gig or whatever else. You guys aren't putting a price premium on this. The only thing you've really done is you've gift just because you can't stack them. So from, from a perspective of why would I buy 3750s anymore, I might as well build parallel stacks and truck back across them because then I'm at least protecting my investment. I understand why you're still going to sell them because there's still going to be clients who yep. haven't done their homework or they don't have a corner that does the homework to do it from. Mm -hmm. But from an integration perspective, if I'm going to do this, there's no way I buy 3750X. Mm -hmm. Yes, if, you're, if, if it's a greenfield um, opportunity, if it's a new infrastructure that you're building, again, you know, there's no reason for you to buy 3750X. Go with 3850X. Oh, I argue even if it's a standing 3750X, I'm not buying them anymore. I'll build parallel stacks to defend my future deployment. Yeah, I agree. Like they 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 3750Xs into their own little environment. Exactly. And replacing yeah, yeah. the 30, yeah. I mean, it's not like we're not used to no, no, trunking no. high bandwidth links across switches, you know, for our entire careers anyway, so it's yeah. nothing new. So. No, I, I, I love your way. option. That It's good for me. <laughs> so some of us call this virtual end of sales. One quick point. So when we talk of stacking, the current core only supports four switches in the stack. 3750, one more additional point if somebody wants to go more than that. Nine, sta nine, nine members. stack is supported only the next version of core. Yeah, within six months, that's coming too. Right, that's coming. Stack. And then stack power is supported on board, and the power supplies are common. I mean, we wanted to we wanted to walk first with the 3850 before we can start running. So that's where we are making small progress on this. So we are there. But from a raw feature set perspective, there's nothing that the 3850 can't do that the 3750 can do. Yes, yes. Uh, there is there is no uh, no no any 
features like that that Padillo cannot do. Cannot do. It's going to take a little bit of time for us to catch up in software feature parity. Okay. But uh, it'll it'll, you, it'll be there in in, a, in the next few. Virtual end of sale is making <laughs> yeah. more and more sense as a statement. <laughs>